So I might leave this trick one till last because we haven't done trick for a little while, which is kind of why I wanted to review it. So we'll come back to this guy. Let's have a look at the quadratics, okay? So number two, you can see minus seven, um, sorry, negative seven, I should say. Negative seven, negative 18. You can think of the pair of numbers, can't you? And you're gonna get positive two, negative nine. So it's been broken apart successfully. Um, I will point out, if it's a case like this where it's a monic quadratic and you identify that pair of numbers, you don't have to write this intervening line. You can go straight to positive two, negative nine. Okay? Um, the reason why we write that in-between line, the reason why we break it apart, is it makes it easier when it's non-monic. Like say this guy, we're gonna deal with this in a second, and writing this extra line is really helpful when you do this. But when it's monic, you, you, you're plus two and you're minus nine, just bam, there you go. You just chuck them into the factorization and you're done. Because you want them both to be equal to zero, you actually reverse the sign. So that's a nine, isn't it? It's a nine, yes, okay, thank you. So nine, negative two, thumbs up, yep, yeah. fantastic. Now, this last one at the bottom, uh, quickly you realize you cannot factorize, which is no problem. We now know a pair of strategies that works when you can't factorize. What's the pair of strategies? What's this one? This is completing the square, or alternatively, you could have done the formula, okay? So I, I'm actually just curious, who used the formula? Hands up. Hands up straight. Okay, I'm interested. Hands down. What I would encourage you to do is, maybe the formula is newer, so maybe you use it less instinctively. What that probably means is you need to practice it a bit because sometimes using the formula is just so much faster than completing the square. Uh, other times you still need to learn how to complete the square. So those people who prefer the formula still need to remember how to do this. Let's have a look. Uh, does it look like it's been completed successfully? What's this line about? What's this four on two business? Yeah, you halve and then you square. So halving it gives you two, squaring it gives you four, which is why one plus four equals five. From here to here, we've kind of sort of done two things in one hit, but I'm okay with it because it's right. Um, you get the plus or minus square root. Where did this plus two come from? Yeah, you, you would have been left with x minus two on the left hand side, but you know you just want x. So the person who's worked this out has just added two to both sides. Looks good. Uh, just a minor note, uh, because you got the plus minus there, it's customary to write the other number first. Like so. And this actually will become useful to us a bit later on, so I'm going to encourage you to write the other number, positive or negative, write that one first, and then do the plus minus afterwards, okay? As promised, we're gonna come back to question one. So it's been a little while since you've touched these kinds of questions, so let me help you out a little bit. I've started by drawing this thing, the, drawing the quadrants, okay? I see that sine x is equal to, and then there's this number. What's the sign of the number? Like, plus or minus. It's a, it's a negative, right? So when you come over to your quadrants, which quadrants am I interested in? Okay, quadrants three and four are the ones I want because in those quadrants, sine is negative, right? Another way I can say is that sine is positive up here, so those are the ones I don't want, okay? Either way, you end up in quadrant three and quadrant four. We'll work out what to do with those quadrants in a second. I have to work out the base angle. Now, the base angle you can use, uh, you can find rather, using sine inverse. But there's something missing here. What you would do to get the base angle is you wouldn't do sine inverse of minus, you just drop off the negative, okay? That will give you the base angle. You could also remember that this is an exact angle, so you'll get 60, okay? 60 is not the solution. 60 is not the solution. If you put sine 60 in here, you don't get minus root three on two. So what do I do with this base angle? Yep, so very good. I'm going to use it to find the versions in quadrants 3 and 4. So for quadrant 3, what do I do with 60? Uh, Hold on, you 10, you 10. Who got this one right? Does anyone know? Yes, hands up straight. Okay, about, about a third, a half of you. There's a lot of you who do not have your hands up. So I want to help you with this. So you know how to do this, so you remember. I'm going to take the 60 degrees, and I'm going to say in quadrant 3, you get 180 plus 60. Whereas in quadrant 4, it's 360 take away 60. So my two answers are 
240 and 300. Those are the two solutions I'm expecting. Does that make sense? And by the way, this answer here, negative 60, is not wrong. It's just not in the domain I'm interested in, right? Which is not to 360, which admittedly I forgot to write first time and add it afterwards, okay? Um, negative 60 is this negative 60 right there. So it's part of the right answer. It's just not the whole thing, okay? 